Hello everyone, and welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Genshin Impact. My name is Azuark, and my goal today is to tell you about how you'll spend your time in Genshin. There are so many things we could be beginning our introduction with, like combat mechanics, leveling and resources, exploring the overworld, the game's monetization, but I feel like the place we need to start in judging this game is how you spend your time. So in order to get my point across, I'm going to be incredibly super reductive. I'm going to say there are two general things to do in Genshin Impact. Non-repeatable tasks, which I'll refer to as content, and renewable activities, which I'm going to call account building. Content refers to the good stuff. Exploring the overworld, looting treasure chests, unlocking new areas, completing quests. When you play an open world adventure game, this is the stuff you mostly come along for. And there's a ton of this. Genshin Impact began with the nations of Mondstadt and Liyue. These were just two of what will eventually be seven areas, and the game has been around long enough now that Mihoyo has released the third, Inazuma. Just Mondstadt alone, though, will take hours to explore, to quest through, and to accomplish everything there is to do. By the time you've hunted down all the chests, collected all the animoculi for the statues, progressed through the main quests and then the side quests that spring up along the way, cleared the micro dungeons, you'll have spent at least... well... I went through my footage of my time on my account when I started an alt, and I tabulated that by the time I had declared myself done with Mondstadt, including the side area of Dragonspine, I had played for a total of 43 hours over a period of three weeks. And Mondstadt's considered the prologue. However, that's mostly because I played with a strong focus on the repeatable stuff. The resource gathering stuff. The account building, as I'm calling it. My account was also Adventure Rank 34 by that point. Adventure Rank is basically your account's overall level. And I imagine someone who simply blazed through the quests might be as low as AR 25. Every day, I did my four commissions. Every day, I made sure to spend all my resin. Every day, I went out and farmed enemy drops as much as I reasonably could in my little sliver of the world. I played for about an hour at a time, and over half of that was spent on improving my account rather than just churning up the content. Now, this was obviously my decision, and you don't have to play that way. But there are even more repeatable things that I didn't even have access to. I couldn't fish. I couldn't build furniture for my housing system. I couldn't do almost any of the limited time events, which, although those are technically one and done, they operate on a revolving door that makes them kind of like a repeatable task. And I couldn't do most of the weekly bosses. Simply put, I chose to focus on doing almost exclusively the things that it takes to level my characters and my weapons while setting the world exploration to the side. And I freaking love world exploration. I'm not saying you need to take it as far as I have, but if you're in it for the long haul, you might want to think about that. And if you're not in it for the long haul, and you decide you just want to go right for all the quests, you'll still have at least 100 hours of content before you're left scratching your head wondering what else there is left to do. Okay, so that's one side of talking about time. Let's talk about another. Since Genshin is designed to be played at least a bit each day, rather than a whole lot at once and then walking away, it has an energy system called Resin. Resin fully regenerates in about 21 hours. So if you play the same time each day, you'll come back to a full supply. Technically, you'll miss out on maybe 10% of what you could get if you logged in twice, but it's safe to assume this is roughly what Mihoyo expects you'll do in a day. Side note, you can pay for extra resin each day, but trust me, don't do that. It's not worth it. I bring all this up because I want you to recognize Mihoyo's plan a little each day. They want you to stick around for 20 to 30 minutes of the repeatable stuff, give or take, depending on your needs. And then, however long you want to keep going to explore and quest. But I want to stress, there's very little incentive to rush to the end because there is no endgame content. 
There's no raiding like World of Warcraft, no PvP like in Destiny, no constant boss farming like in Diablo. The only part of the game that even sort of looks like Endgame is the Spiral Abyss, a ridiculously hard dungeon that resets every two weeks. But MiHoYo consistently adds to the game, and they are a long way from being done the game. So to that effect, let's talk about the development cycle. There's a new patch every six weeks. In each patch, we get two gacha banners, three or four limited time events, some of which are small and gimmicky, and some of which are incredibly well developed with full voice acting and everything. But with each patch, they also add a little bit more to the game's permanent content. Story quests, a new area to explore. Every patch has added something. But it took seven patches for them to decide it was time to release the third nation of Inazuma, which in real time is about 10 months. MiHoYo's plan is to add four more nations, and then there's additional bits on the world to go from there. The game was originally scheduled for a five-year release plan. There have been rumors the devs might not adhere to that, but the main thing I'm trying to say in all of this is if you're looking to explore all sides of the game and not just the part that makes it seem like a Breath of the Wild clone, you should anticipate playing wide, not tall. Genshin will be here a couple years from now, still releasing more material on a drip feed, and it's up to you whether you want to take part in a product that's good for an hour a day indefinitely, rewarding you gradually over time for your steady commitment, or in exchange for not seeing a the end or game over screen. And although the other components I'm going to discuss over the next few days might seem like they're more important, I would argue that this, the time commitment and whether you want to brave it, is the most critical component to consider of any game. You can, of course, put Genshin down at any time, and I would encourage you to try it and then stop if it's not for you. But if you're the kind of person who insists on finishing what you started, well, uh, there may be an end to that content, as I called it, but there's no real end to your account's development. Tomorrow, I'll talk about the world and exploration, so thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.